Now Bristol's got a new Lord Lieutenant. A what, you ask? A Lord Lieutenant. Uh, the role might have changed just a bit since uh, it was set up by Henry VIII uh, to look after local militias, but it's an important and a prestigious honour to this day to have bestowed upon you as Her Majesty the Queen's representative. And um, Peaches Golding is with me now. Peaches, how lovely to see you. And oh, it's wonderful seeing you too. Thanks uh, for inviting well, me. Well, what about this honour then? I mean, to, to be fair, not many people maybe will have heard of it, but it, 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 you know, to be the Queen's representative in Bristol. Absolutely. I mean, it is just the most unbelievable honour and great privilege to be appointed as Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant for the county and city of Bristol. So the duties are what? What will you be doing through the time? Because well, it's, it's quite a long-term thing, isn't it? It is. It's until my 75th birthday. So, of course, that's decades, decades and decades, decades, and decades, and decades. away. That's yeah. it. But it's my responsibility to identify places that are suitable for a royal visit and actually arranging that and escorting our royal visitors around. It means representing the Queen to the armed forces, so that's the reserves at um, Clifton Down or at HMS Flying Fox on Winterstock Road, or perhaps if we have a, a visiting vessel. What's very interesting is, of course, what are the new um, aircraft carriers, mm -hmm. HMS Prince of Wales, will be affiliated to Bristol. So I'm going up to see her yeah. next week. That's I, I, really I tell you fantastic. something, and I'm going to spare your blushes because you know you, you, you've got so much humility about all of this stuff as well. We know loads of the work that you've done over the last number of years in Bristol, but you say I'm just an ordinary girl, you well, know. I and, am, you, Steve. Peaches, you're far, far from it. I mean, you, you were the high sheriff. You've got the OBE. Uh, you, you recognise for what you do, but you, you, you keep that sort of common touch, if you like. You know, you, you want to be involved, don't you, with the, the, the ordinary people of the city? Absolutely. If you lose touch with your roots, you lose touch with yourself. And as I say, I'm, I'm ordinary. I came from an ordinary family. We did perhaps extraordinary things in, in, in those times and days. I'm just an ordinary girl, well, and I love what people do. <laughs> I'm interested in people. But the st it's not ordinary. The story could be from Gone with the Wind, or, or it could be some major movie. I mean, your, your great-great-grandmother was, was sold into slavery, isn't that right? In, she in, was in, born into slavery. Yeah. And so my second great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, bought my great-great-grandmother in her preteens, actually. And she grew up as the slave that took care of the household. Yeah. Yes. And then bore the, the, the mill owner children. That's right, yes, in, three in that, children. In that relationship. Yes, yeah. that's So you've right. got the mill owner and the slave, and then yes. both sides of the family yes. carrying on through to that to this day. Absolutely, yes. And we're a that wonderful family. That was the houses, family. wasn't it? The, that's right, we're yeah. a wonderful family. On the one side, we go back to 1527, out of Schiffhausen in Switzerland, People came to the U.S. Some of them decided we'll go to the South, yeah. we'll have plantations and make our fortune that way. Other brothers decided, oh, reprehensible trade, could never do that, moved to a different part of America and had their lives. So it's the story of the Civil War, brother fighting brother. It's an amazing history in that all of us houses, black and white, still come together yeah. as one big family and it's wonderful. It's amazing it's wonderful. when you talk about that, you look at the, 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 the way America is at the minute with the splits that are going on with the politics and almost brother against brother in some ways which would make you weep I suppose but the other similarities and the other parallels if you like with Bristol, we, we talk about the Bristol bus boycott you know with uh, uh, Paul Stevenson and the fantastic work he did but your dad wasn't it the Greyhound buses back in 1947 that he, 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 he led a march there, he, he refused to move to the back of the bus as, as black people had to do at that time? That's right. That was the law. Um, and my father was traveling from North Carolina up to see my mother who was working in West Virginia. So it was a bus that traveled between states. And he sat in the front of the bus. Um, and if it were a bus that only traveled within the state, he could not have done that. But he yeah. knew the law educated man, he yeah, knew the law, yeah. so he sat at the front of the bus and everyone encouraged him to move to the back of the bus, he refused to do so. Um, so yes, the bus stopped at one of the depots, someone brought out a rope, because in those days dreadful things happened, yeah. um, but my father was able to get a lawyer, he successfully sued the bus company for $2,000, and in 1947 that was a lot of money. So what a said, background. Dad, what did yeah. you do with that money? He said, 
I bought a car, so I didn't have to ride the bus again. <laughs> His independence was there. But yeah, the Bristol bus boycott in the 60s, it was still going on. And attitudes, I mean, in some places, attitudes haven't changed at all. I mean, the law has, and thank goodness we're a lot more tolerant now. But what do you make of the whole slavery argument that goes on in Bristol and what we see, whether we talk about the Colston Hall, whether the name should change and so on and so forth? Is it, is it in any way as simple as that of, of erasing parts of the past, do you think? I'm not sure we can ever erase the past. I do think we have to discuss as a city what that past might mean and what it is we do to assuage that, how it is we can make peace. And I don't think that any one part of the city can do that. I think we have to do it as a, as a big discussion. Do you see it as a unified city? Do you see it as very much a city of a sanctuary, of course, which is what it was and is, but uh, how do you view it in a couple of words? I think Bristol is actually a very harmonious place. I know we have tensions sometimes, that's normal, but I also know in Bristol we get along extremely well as different communities. We speak 91 different languages yeah. here. We worship 45 different gods and religions. We get on extremely well in the city and we should never forget that. And what, what, what do you set yourself, it's not targets, but what, what would you like to achieve as Lord Lieutenant, or Lieutenant as you would say in America, isn't it? It's yes, but <laughs> in Rome, do as the Romans. So I'm Lord Lieutenant, <laughs> You're and stick very happily but so, what, yes. What, what, what would you like, sort of your legacy of that period, do you think, to be, or do we have to wait and see? I think you'll have to wait and see, but there are some things that I'm very keen to do. One of the things that I'm tasked to do is to be able to represent the city through the appointment of deputy lieutenants. Mm. And I think there are some opportunities to expand the focus that we have mm. in the city. So that, yeah. to me, is very interesting. So watch the space. Maybe I'll come back and tell you about that in a moment. Oh, you, you'd be more than welcome. I think there's some exciting days to come yes. in Bristol. It's never, it stops changing and evolving and so on. But Peaches, will you, you stay with us because we've got another very important topic to talk about. And that's Thank you. Doctor Who. And, and you peeking around the side of a TARDIS. So uh, we, we will, <laughs> exactly, we'll talk about that in a second or two.